Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith, and this is Steam Wagon Ho, Part 8. All right, uh, last episode there, we were putting, milling the keyways in here and putting the holes through here, and we left you with the cliffhanger, as <laughs> some of you say, right? Um, how are we going to get the holes in this flange? All right, now we need to put the holes in the flange because that's how the sprocket mounts to this and I'm, I'm holding the two there's two plates on each side here that sandwich the gear that they're, they're flush with this outside but they they set it in a recess and the hole pattern goes through there's two hole patterns there's an outer hole pattern that bolts to the sprocket and the inner hole pattern bolts to the shaft all right now the dilemma was how are we going to put those holes in there when that hole pattern is smaller than the diameter of this flange here or that flange right there all right now there's many ways to to get hole patterns drilled in here and i i just have an idea and i'm going to go ahead and and roll with it all right i'm going to manufacture a drill guide that's going to clamp onto here and then i'm going to manufacture a flexible drill bit that will go down through that drill guide and put those holes perfectly square the way they're meant to be so that those plates can come down here and bolt together and sandwich this just like the full size model of this this shaft originally was done all right now i have an old slug here it's a rem a drop off of one of the jobs and we're going to start with this. It does have a pilot hole, but I'm going to sit there and open up that hole a little bit larger in the lathe. And then we're going to progress on. We're going to do a little milling. And we're going to go into the other shop. And we're going to be doing a little soldering. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do a little drilling, a little more milling. And then we're going to have a drill guide. All right. So let's, uh, let's bring you into the lathe and let's get started. There we go. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to face and, and just kind of break the edges inside and outside just so that we have a nice smooth surface on the outside. Put away this drill bit. Put our center back in. Always, we always keep something in our tailstock. Uh, so that the pour is not uh, open for flying debris. Okay, now I can turn this up a little bit on the speed here. Alright, we're just going to touch it out here. Come in here. We're just feeding it by hand. All right, I raise it up just slightly above by hand and then come in. All right, let's turn it around. Do the same thing.
Okay. We're good to go. All right, we're over here at the K&T, one of my favorite machines. Um, and just because I love the horizontal boring machine and my universal head and everything else, it kind of lets me get that action out of a little mill. And this really is a little mill. This is a number two, okay? The, most of the time in the big shops there, you'll, have, you'll be running a number three, number four, number five type shape, whether it be Milwaukee, Cincinnati, or this and that. And this is really old old school. So um, I just I just love the, this K and T. All right. Um, and anyway, let's um let's go ahead. We've got our slug here. All right. And what we want to do now is we want to slit it as perfect as we can in, in in half. Okay. Now there's a lot of different ways to do slitting and uh, cutting slicing the part in half and uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, my mega sharp them here and uh, I'll just go ahead and go all the way around because we just got so much of it right here all right um, that is super cool sharp them in the big container all right we're gonna let that dry while we're changing cutters um, we're gonna use this arbor inch and a quarter wheel cutter arbor and we were cutting a keyway and a shaft not too long ago and we're just gonna we're gonna go ahead and while the harbor's in here we're just gonna change it out the cutter uh this cutter is 150 thousandths or so thick i wish i had one a little thinner but um i don't with the staggered tooth and that's what i favor in here um all right so we're gonna loosen this up and we're gonna pull off our bearing support for our bar because we need to get to the cutter. All right, I'm gonna wipe some goo off of here. Okay, and we'll slide this off of here. Go hang this one up on the rack. Okay, are we out in the center? We're out in the center enough, okay? And I like I like cutting in that direction, so I feed the table that direction. And put that on there like that. Next is the, I run the key all the way through the cutter. And then I run another sleeve, so I have at least that. All right, now, <clears throat> The, the closer you are with your support, the stronger you are. And so running, running the support bearing right next to the, the wheel. And, of course, we're going to be cutting through here. And when we go through that material, are we going to have enough room here? Okay, so we lightly put this on here so that it holds all the sleeves and stuff together. And then we can slide this on there. And... All right, if we're going to go all the way halfway through this thing here and we're eyeballing down here, are we going to be interfering? No, we're not going to be interfering. We got clearance right between here and that radius. So we're going to leave this up there tight like that. And oh, when you tighten, when I tighten the cutter, you want to pull the backlash or the slack out of the keyway so that it doesn't have any free spin before it gets contact with the key. Um, that way, if it ever grabs on you, you know it's as strong as possible and it's not going to spin. And then catch the key and continue on and probably shear the key off. Uh, that is the case sometimes. Alright, our dicum is uh, dry on there. And we're going to go ahead and take our center square here and we're just going to create a straight line across here. All right, and just for kicks, we're going to check and double check it in the other direction. Our line is right in the center. Sometimes when you're out here at the edge, you will have a little variance because not all of these edges are completely finished. Some some center heads are finished out here, and then you can come to where your surface is not quite meeting uh, the, the flat face. 
and it's standing on the edge and you'll still get a good reading but the this pair here does not have that done so I just double check it uh, on a regular basis all right so we have we have lines and now I'm going to go ahead and change out my head so that I have a square um, here or I can grab my other machine a square um, and we're going to be putting that line straight up and down and then we're going to go ahead and clamp this thing down and I think let me see here wipe and give some fresh oil in here Okay, we can run it in the uh, the center, the center groove. We're going to go ahead and run it in there. We're going to bring things up and uh, get them square and tighten down. All right, that'll be the next step. Okay, we come in and we eyeball that so that we are square. Then we hold that down firm and we slide in our bar here, and we're going to make it equal both both directions there we're going to slide our t-nuts in here while we're holding pressure down on there so we know it doesn't rotate same thing on this end here Okay, we kind of make this equal both directions here. And the reason why we have it so far out is the, the, the radius of the cutter. Because we want it to be all the way through from here to here. So we have to have swing out and swing in for the cutter. All right, and it's got to clear these nuts and the studs. One thing you don't want is you don't want your cutter cutting into your clamping hardware. pocket scale just kind of make sure that we have a couple inches and a couple inches and we just bring in it equal here all right Now this is a long bend here, and I mean this can we can we can give excess force on here, but it doesn't really take a whole bunch of force because we're down in a V block here, constant pressure down, and we are square, and you could actually take <clears throat> and you could go ahead and measure over from that line to here, that line down to there, and verify that we stayed square. Um, our slot. When we come and we hit center here and start protruding down, we'll let it, we'll see that scribe line right dead nuts in the center. If we held it in place right and we eyeballed it right. Okay, and if not, we will adjust it. Um, all right, let's bring her up. bring her in bring her over all right we're in position where we can get in there close see what we got here we're gonna put the light over here so we can maneuver it around and we need to go ahead and get our dial free so that we can we're gonna adjust 
adjust it manually up and down and we're going to go side to side until we get that cutter running exactly where we want it. We're going to throw some oil in, in this bearing here manually. Okay. Let it drip there. Okay. Uh, a pretty big diameter come down with a little cutter so we're just taking it real easy okay we're just touching it now okay and all we want to do is make a flat that's as wide as the cutter and we're pretty close to it right there and we're just setting zero on our dial we know we're going to be going quite a bit but uh, okay, now we're just going to feed it out here to the edge and then we're going to come back here and what we're doing I'm going to come around to this side here and we're looking at that line splitting our cut and straight on we're doing a nice job. It looks like it's splitting it real, very well. I like that. Okay. Now we're going to be running a little juice on this cut here. First we're going to come back here to the, the beginning. And Give it a little bit of juice here. I'm about ready to change out this cutting fluid, but this is um, Trim E206 is uh, what I use in here. Okay. I'm cranking on down here. This is a uh, coal roll finish. I think I can take this whole thing in one cut here. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to get down to it here. I don't want to block out your picture here. I think that's going to be through. All right. Now we're going to, we're feeding about a half an inch a minute here. And here we go. Okay, we come around the other side to watch it exit here. Brush away some of these chips here. I get a little tiny bit of air. Just give you a little flow here so it kind of blows it away. Without making too much of a mess.
Okay, and I'm just cranking it out a little bit here until I can feel it gone. Okay, there, it's gone all the way through. Okay, let's bring her down. Okay, a little tiny piece of skin right down here at the bottom. We can bend, uh, we can bend it, it's like aluminum foil almost. That's how thin it is. All right, we're gonna vacuum this, loosen this up, and we're gonna spin it around. Okay, one inch is half of our diameter here, so we want we want to spin it, and of course, let's go ahead and bring it out this side here, just so it's easier. Okay, and from this edge to that center of that line, we want one inch on the rotation. All right, there we go. I like that. Okay, we want to make sure it looks like we slid that way just a little bit on our on our bar. We're there. Okay, double check on our one inch this way. We're good. Okay, we're moderately tight there. All right, we should be able to come back, come right down to our line right here. Okay, here we go. This, <laughs> this is when it gets interesting, see, because uh, when we cut all the way straight through and we get to the other side, okay, um, the part's in two pieces. What do you think happens? All right. Let me get a roll in here. And I'm going to lightly touch and see where I'm at as far as on the part here. Okay, I'm right at the beginning. Okay, let me get the air nozzle here and I want to blow. Okay, and... Alright, we take our little flashlight here and that line, you see that line? That line is right in the center of that cut. Alright, we're on the money.
I'll show you how, tell you how you can tell how close you are when you get it split in half. Well, we're going to measure the two halves and we're going to see which one's fatter or thinner than the other one, all right? So you can tell with other tests afterwards here. But by eyeball, it looks like we can go right where we're at. Okay, we're just hand cranking this down. And get the air nozzle over here. Really does help to have a little bit of that out of there. If I'm in your way, it's uh, because I have to be. I just want to make sure that we're taking it enough here. Okay, looks like we're there. All right. Are you ready? All right, let's feed it forward. About halfway through, I'm gonna bring you around to the other side. Okay, we brought you around this other side. We still have a ways to go. Just starting to get to the edge. Okay, now this is with the part where I put my hand up on my control lever to be ready for anything else. Little air nozzle here. Okay, now, sometimes with a flat bar going through here, you're holding pressure outwards and the thing will pop apart, okay? In this case here, I've got the round bar going through and it's not holding, it's not holding it in, it's not holding it out, okay? So, we are safe and we, I'm, I'm through there, that's the paper thin. I'm not getting a chance on it coming in or out anymore. So, let's go ahead and let's bring her down. Here again is this anything but paper thin right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo that and we should be able to separate those two pieces there.
we go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean up our mess here. And we'll take and we'll get the uh, little burrs and all the uh, little stuff cleared off of them. And, uh, and we're going to run them into the sander. We're going to just lightly kiss the, the metal edges to them. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to measure the height of each one of these and see how close that we came to being exactly on center. Okay, we took both of these in and we sanded them and we left just a little witness mark, meaning we didn't take it all the way down to the one face there. Uh, there's a little one there. This one here actually started cleaning up out here. This one here, you can see a little bit there and just a little remnants down in here. Uh, two spots. Okay, now we got a one eighth parallel and that means we're just going to use this on both of them. Okay, so right there, we're just going to measure straight across the outside there. 1 inch 49 thousandths on that one. And 1 inch 38 thousandths. So we were 5 thousandths off center. All right. Um, that's a, it's pretty fair by eye. Okay, we're set up here, up in the welding shop here. And uh, this is just a sheet of uh, half inch plate and uh, it's just sitting up on top of our table but we have uh, a fire brick right here and I <clears throat> I put our two pieces on here uh, that they, they might ra rock and roll a little bit but uh, it, it should be fine because we're just gonna tin these four surfaces right here then we're gonna put the two pieces together we're going to put a hose clamp over it. We're going to tighten it up and then we're going to heat it up and we're going to set those two halves tinned together with the solder. We're using Harris 50-50 solder and we're going to use Stay Clean um, Tinning Flux. Okay, this is a liquid. We've got an acid brush in here and a striker and a torch. I think that's all we're going to need and uh, of course our gloves all right so let's uh let's bring you in a little closer so you get a better picture of the uh, the tinning action going on here okay this is the same kind of flux and and tinning process that I would use to tin or prep a casting for porn Babbitt it's the same same scenario same Material, same fluxes and same solder. We're going to get this spread out on here before they get real hot. Okay, that should be enough there now. Open ventilation.
may have to scrub this into it a little bit. For a second here all right and This surface right here is giving us the most problem right there. All right, let's try to put a little bit more silver on it. Let's see. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to take now. All right, let's go ahead and let's... That scrubbing action on, on the part, really what does it. Let's, there we go. Okay. Okay, I like that. All right. We got a puddle on all four of those surfaces right there. We're going to let that cool to where it's solid. Then we're going to go ahead and stand them up and we're going to clamp it down with the hose clamp. Okay, we, we cleaned off our surface here and we stood these up. Still a little bit warm. One of them actually still a little bit wet, you know, on it. But we're going to bring these together. We've got our sides all set. And put this on down about halfway here. Let me tighten that up. That's equal, equal. Um, we'll just get a little mallet here. We're going to put it down on the steel so we don't break our brick here. Okay, it's pretty hot, but all right. <clears throat> now we're gonna just warm it up one more time here. Just so it'll bring it together. You know, it doesn't take, doesn't take too much to bring that together but we're going to be looking at the gloss right in the split line there yeah I can see it seeping right down in there running right out the bottom down there we'll do the same thing over here okay we know that we're gonna be in there and we know we're gonna be tight yeah that's as tight as it's gonna get okay and uh, we can just brush off excess here 
We like that. All right, we're just gonna let this thing cool right on down to room temperature. Okay, our part is cooled down and we're gonna take off the hose clamp now. And if we did a successful solder job, it should stay together. All right. Um, and it's just our, our pick of the draw, which side we want to go with. Um, we did hold it like this, and the solder kind of flowed to the bottom, pooled around the center there. Um, it's half a dozen of the other, I guess. Um, all right, so we're going to we'll stick it in the four jaw here, and I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I keep forgetting where I put the chuck wrench because Philip made me this nice holder, and <laughs> it fits all over the place here, anywhere I want it to fit. Really nice. Thank you very much, Phil. All right, um, uh, just kind of look and see. Yeah, we're, we're not too far off here. Oh, well, I do want to rotate it just a little. I, I want it to be like split line right in here. And how far do we want it to stick out here? I would like to at least finish the part off about an inch, right? Now you don't know I'm making it, right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to dial this in, the four jaw. We're going to four point it, meaning straight across from this jaw to this jaw and straight across from this jaw to this jaw. Um, split line is running this way. That way we have equal pressure coming in and we're not really pushing against the side and this way here. Um, I think it's more of a positive lock. So let me go grab the indicator and we'll start dialing this piece in. I think I've got it equally tensioned right now before we even start. All right, I'll be right back. I went and got the indicator, um, but I also, I, I checked this actually on both sides here and the narrow section parallel with our split line is measuring like 1840. And the actual split line here, I'll go behind the solder buildup here and it's about uh, 1985, 1980 in that realm right in there. So it only took about five ten thousandths um, off of the diameter this way. But lengthwise, we, we, lost, uh, we lost 150 thousandths, the width of our cutter there. And um, so that's why I'm choosing to dial it the way I want to to four point it from here because I'm trying to hold it equal as I can as far as uh, the wall thickness. Now we're going to be boring it and we're going to be turning it so it's irrelevant to what it actually it could be sitting off but we're trying to get that split line to remain close because we want a press fit where we're going to grab the shaft and we want that to be tight and we want the split line to be equal so it's not going to be over center on either side because if you if you had the offset so far off in one direction you would have a C on one side and you would have an open face on the other side and you wouldn't it, 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 in reality it wouldn't it wouldn't fit right onto it you'd have to snap it on place or then it would deform it uh, spread it Okay. We're within ten thousand that way. Okay, uh, let's see. We're at uh, five, five fifty, and four fifty. So we're about fifty thousands out this way.
and I'm checking the uh, lows in between each one of there so we're within about five thousands right now all right um, let's go ahead and back this out here I say we're pretty close. Okay, now on the high on the split, we're at uh, like 40, 39, 40, somewhere around in there. On the low here, we're about 70 and about 68. So we're within a couple thousands. I think that's that's good. I'm gonna tighten it up right there, and we're gonna call this part zero. Okay, let's put it in the gear again. Okay, and fire it off. That looks good. Actually, you can see the jaws are running real true to each other. That's also another visual that you actually have four points dialed in exactly right with the, uh, the chuck here. All right, we put in our small CNMG uh, uh, insert here, and we're going to go ahead and take a face cut here. We'll come over here, and we're going to touch. All right, and we'll take about oh ten thousands off of there. And that solder joint looks really good, and this is a nice finish. Got a nice finish to that. Um, seam line or the split line looks really good. All right, now let's go ahead, and uh, I think we're going to have to change directions here on my feed because we're going to be going in. Okay, and. Uh, I was just zero out that diameter for right now, just so I know what I'm going to be taking. Uh, and this is uh, 50 off the diameter, so that's 25 aside. There we go. Just for kicks, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to measure the, the length of the flat, which is um, pretty close to 900 on that side. And uh, we're about 820, 820 on that side. Okay. Okay, um, now I'm measuring what's left. So we got one uh, 100 there, and we got one 170 or so there. All right, so it is cleaning up pretty nice, and the split line's looking good on the 
the outside there as well. So we did get that nice and thin means that we've got it nice and tight. And that means our tolerance or our, our, our closeness is going to be, for our final part, is going to be very, very close. When we break that seam loose. Okay, I mic'd it across here and we're at uh, 1853 and we need to uh, clean up probably right there about 1840 is the diameter. So we're within about 10,000 of cleaning this up all the way. That side's just a little tiny bit fatter than that side right there as far as that blank area to clean up yet. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and crank in uh, 835 which will be 15,000 from where we're at. Doesn't need to be any certain diameter, just round on the outside. Okay, that is nice, it's round, and we're at uh, 1 inch 8 uh, 35 by the calipers. And that's what I was shooting for. Alright, um, let's get set up. We're going to pull this bit out and we're going to get set up with a boring bar.